Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. Today, I wanna to bring you an excerpt from one of the tutorials found in the Photoshop composite series. The full tutorial covers creating high school senior sports photo manipulation artwork. These pieces of art are a great way to capture a new high school senior business in your market and can be the signature piece that defines your brand. In this excerpt, we'll cover some artistic stylizations and the tools in Photoshop that help you produce the core results. To see this full tutorial or over 35 hours of photo manipulation education, become a subscriber to the Photoshop Composite series. There is a monthly or annual subscription option and either gets you immediate access to the online series, the working files for each tutorial, and our private community on Facebook, where we'll have monthly live broadcasts continuing the journey of education. Visit the series website to learn more. Link is also in the description below. Now, let's dive into the excerpt. So let me demonstrate a couple of things. First, let's grab that um, grounding picture, uh, establishing shot of Taylor. So V for the move tool, I'm holding shift and dragging it up to untitle one, which is our new document. And because I'm holding shift, no matter where I position the mouse, when I let go, it's going to drop the layer right into the center of the document itself. I'm going to resize this just a little bit so it fits right into the center. Now I want to demonstrate the line art action to you and show you some of its uses. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer a second time because I'll use that duplicate to show you blend if. So I'm going to turn off the top one for right now, click the layer mask here and right click it and say apply layer mask so it's going to delete all the data from the original image then when we shot it and now we just have our extracted version of taylor so to run the line art action that is again included in the extras you need to have only one active layer in the layers window because it does a snapshot of everything that it sees that is active. So what does that mean? Well, essentially all of these little eye icons mean that all three of these layers are active. They're visible. The texture layer, the white background layer, the picture of Taylor. So I'm going to hold the alter option key and click the eye icon of the layer that I want to be on. And the others will turn off because I'm holding alter option. So now that's a fast way to turn all the others off. We see the checkerboard pattern. We just now have this layer of Taylor. So then I can run the line art action. It's gonna populate everything that we need. Now we have two new layers. We have the original layer, and then we have the line art layer itself. I'm gonna go ahead and manually turn on the previous layers, and I'm gonna turn off the color layer of Taylor, the original one here that we had, and just we have the parchment one. Now, with this, it's pure white and black. The black is, of course, the outline perimeter of Taylor. We need to choose a layer blending mode or other methods to let it interact with the texture in the background. So let's try just some of the simple blending modes. As I've said in previous videos, blending modes are the most powerful tool inside of Photoshop. Let's go to overlay. Soft light. Those are usually the two most popular. But what's happening is it's taking these two blending modes, essentially take any color that is brighter than 50% gray and makes everything brighter. Any color that is darker than 50% gray and makes everything darker. Well, since a predominant color in that layer is white, it's making everything bright. So this doesn't work for these two blending modes. So let's try some of the darker ones like darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darker color. Let's go to darken. Now, all the black lines are showing through. We're starting to get that line art effect and we can see how it's coming into play. Multiply, color burn. I'm a fan of color burn when I use the line art because it's taking the dark lines and burning the color beneath. So there's still a harmony of color instead of it being just a pure black outline as we see with multiply and color burn. And I'm going to explain why the line art is important to the overall design here in just a moment. But right now, I just want you to understand why this action works in the way that it works and how to use it. So color burn would be the one that I would recommend as a choice for how it can blend uh, into the scene. So let's go ahead and turn that one off. Let's turn this color one back on. I'm gonna right click the layer mask and say apply layer mask. I wanna explore blend if. If you don't know what blend if is, it's an option to be able to take parts of the image and blend it down to the layers beneath or let some of the layers come up and through the layer and that'll be very self-explanatory here as we start working with this. So 
to get to the blend if dialog there's two easy ways to do it we can either double click anywhere on the layer where there's not a word or a picture and that will bring up the layer style window here and then blend if options are right there i'm going to hit cancel you can also select the layer and come down to the fx tab and the first option here says blending options click that that will also bring up the layer style window with the blend if options so blend if deals with primary luminosity values light values white black and gray and those are the thresholds of what it says can be blended and moved based upon a mid-tone of gray so we're saying blend if gray it's saying great right at 50 percent gray which is gray is 50 percent gray then black is zero and white is 255. those are the three numbers that photoshop understands as far as luminosity values are concerned so we can say this layer which is the layer of Taylor, any of the shadow regions, they can start to fade away, which will allow anything underneath shadow wise to be visible and seen. So we're essentially just taking the darkest parts of the layer of Taylor and letting it fade away as we move this triangle over to the right. We move this triangle for the lightest parts of Taylor, we move it to the left, the lightest parts of Taylor begin to fade away and anything underneath is visible. Or we can say, any of the shadows of all the layers underneath any of the darker tones we start to move this they will come up and through the shadows of taylor any of the lights of all the layers underneath they will come up and through as we move this triangle now it's not very intuitive into this interface but if we move the triangle it's doing it in a pure form we always want to feather this effect so for instance let me demonstrate if i take the shadows of taylor this layer of her grab the triangle and start moving it see how quickly it does it how heavy-handed it is we need to feather the effect to feather it we have to split the triangle and to do that you hold alt or option and click the right side of the triangle and it immediately splits into two and slowly feathers that effect we're taking all of the darker tones of taylor out now i've taken the triangle all the way to the right that's as far as it can go but we can shorten this distance even more by taking this triangle that's left and saying the threshold gets smaller and smaller the more that we travel and to the point that all the darkest tones are completely gone and then to be able to see that black triangle we just have to move the white one again and go from that route Blend if is a wonderful tool and it is incredibly powerful in all kinds of output for design. So I strongly recommend that you explore using it as much as you possibly can. And there's no right answer for it. Sometimes taking the shadows out of the layer of Taylor looks good like this. Sometimes taking the white point out will look good and let her blend. See how it's starting to become a very stylized look now. And you know, let's take a pause here and talk about the design. What do I want to do with this montage? Well, most of the montages that you see has some kind of canvas texture like this in the background. And again, it's just an amalgamation of like 15 different action shots with no through line for story and development. I want there to be an inherent story, not only with the overall layout of the action pictures themselves, but the design of the texture and the field and everything we put into this. So my thought is I love this, this texture that we have in the background. It makes me think of the old timey posters that you would see at the turn of the 20th century celebrating baseball. Baseball is the only sport that I really like to watch. I'm not a fan of sports at all, except esports like video game sports. That's the great. Anyway, so with this texture in the background on the outer perimeter, we can get that old feeling, that old parchment, you know, uh, poster that's put up onto the outside of Wrigley Field with a big broom and glue. And then as we travel inward, we can let the colors of the digital photography, the 21st century take place because as much as this poster can look really cool and be old and ancient and sepia tones and all that kind of stuff, moms and dads generally like to spend a lot of money on their beautiful kids' faces when they can see their faces in full color in the 21st century with technology. So the idea with this is that I want that outer darker perimeter to be there in that old time feel and then travel inward to the colors and to all the digital photography. One of the ways to do that is to use Blend If. And as you can see, simply by letting the brightest parts of this picture of Taylor fade away, we're achieving some of that old feeling. 
and letting that old feeling be prevalent into the scene. So it's worth experimenting. Let's do the same thing. I'm holding Alt and Option and letting the darker tones of the texture travel up. And as you can see, it's we're not seeing too much there. Let's go ahead and let the white tones of everything beneath come through. Now it's really letting that texture come into play and definitely curving and cutting off a lot of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that white point again fade away just to demonstrate that power of blend if. So now that you understand the lion art and you understand blend if, let's get to the actual fun of making the poster itself. That concludes the tutorial. If you like the content you found in this video, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. New content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching today. And until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.